Live now. Good afternoon. I declare this meeting of the Morgan Spring Bay Council held on Tuesday, the 26th of March, open at 2.02 p.m. The Morgan Spring Bay Council acknowledges the traditional owners of our region and recognises their continuing con connection to land, waters, and culture. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present. And item 1.1 is present. Uh, present in the chamber today, we have uh, Councillor Woods, Councillor Young, Councillor Churchill, Councillor Gregson, Councillor McQueenie, and Mayor Arnold. Uh, apologies and leave of absence are agenda item 1.2, so in accordance with Regulation 39 of the Local Government Leading Procedure, Regulations 2015. As Chairperson, I hereby request leave of absence for Deputy Mayor Michael Simons and Councillor Neil Edwards for this meeting of council, both for personal reasons. I'll so move. Uh, I need two separate motions, um, Councillor Young. So you're, you're going to move. Neil Edwards. Thank you. Could you move it, please? I move that Neil Edwards be granted leave of absence for the meeting of council held 26 March 2020. I have a second up. Councillor Woods, thank you. With the motion, all those in favour, those against, uh, a, a recommendation is for leave of absence for the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Woods. Thank you. I move that Council grants. Where is it? Sorry. Off it down page five. Uh, the Council grant Deputy Mayor Mike Simons. Um, Leave of absence for the meeting of council held on the on Tuesday, 26th of March, 2020. Thank you. Is there a seconder? McQueenie, thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? Uh, unanimously. Thank you. In attendance today, we have the general manager, Mr. Greg Ingham, the director of works and infrastructure, Mr. Peter Porch, director of planning and development, Mr. Alex Woodward. The Director of Corporate and Community, Ms. Elise Blaine, and our Executive Officer, Mrs. Jasmine Kerr. And item 1.4 is late reports. General Manager, do we have any late reports? No late reports. No late reports, thank you. And item 1.5 is the declaration of interest or conflict. As Mayor, I request elected members to indicate whether they have one, any interest personally or via a close associate as defined in section 49 of the Local Government Act 1993, or two, any conflict as described in Council's Code of Conduct for councillors in any item included in the agenda. No, no declarations, thank you. Move on to agenda item two, 2.1 is the ordinary meeting of Council on the 27th of February. There is a recommendation. Uh, Mr. Woods, thank, thank you. Thank you. I move that the minutes of the ordinary meeting of council held on the 27th of February 2024 at 2 p.m. be held, be confirmed as a true. Is there a seconder, please? Councillor Young, thank you. Motion all those in favour? Those against? It's very nice and thank you. Agenda item 2.2 is the date and purpose of workshops held. There are two workshops for noting. There is a recommendation on page seven. Madam Mayor, I move that Council notes the information. Thank you, Mr. Seconder. Councillor Gregson, thank you. I'll put the motion all those in favour. Councillor Gaines, very generously, thank you. And item 2.3 is the minutes of the Glamorgan <laughs> Spring Bay audit panel to be received. The meeting was held on the 27th of February. There is a recommendation on page 10. Councillor Churchill. I move that Council receives and notes the attached minutes of the Morgan Spring Bay Council audit panel meetings held on the 27th of February 2024. Is there a seconder? Second, Councillor Woods, thank you. Madam Mayor, I'd like to raise an issue about yep. the matter. Certainly. I note that in the report agenda, agenda that um, the 
increase of, a, of the audit fee was $4,000. And from what I understand, it's an increase of about 10% on the whole. And it's like bring that to council's attention. We can't get out of paying the audit fee. As far as I'm aware, no one's pinched any money, unlike some councillors around the place. We have some hundreds of thousands. So, um, I just note that the fee's gone up, and I wonder whether or not the cost the state government gets out of it is warranted. Um, Councillor. Young, yeah, I'm going to defer to the general manager on this, but it's just before I do, it's my understanding that the fee that we pay the audit as audit is negotiated with council. Is that or Miss Blaine? Yeah. No, they yeah. just tell us how much they're going to charge at Miss Blaine. Right. Okay. <laughs> and I don't think, I think it's uh, through you, Madam Mayor, the, the important thing with, with this, I think, is it is money well spent in terms of a council that. That may be operating quite well in the financial space, and the panel, the order panel, recognises recognises this um, as a person, a council that isn't operating well in this space, where a fee may well be justified. So, in terms of value for money, yeah, fair, uh, fair manager, I'm but not saying we, we don't we're no, not no, no. get any benefit from it, but I'm pointing out the extra costs that are imposed on us by government. Thank you. It's a good, it's a point well made, and it's a cost. It, it's not the only area um, of our operation where we have costs imposed on us outside of our control. Yes, yes, so, by all means. So, um, we'll just note that you've left the chamber yeah. for a few minutes. So, um, yes, we'll we'll just just look at that. <laughs> um, uh, Councillor McQueen, you have a question? Yeah, just in relation to your mayor, that's to the general manager. In relation to item 11 on the general manager's update, the audit panel, and appreciate that this might have already been discussed or circulated when I haven't had access for the last five or so weeks to council dealings. Mm -hmm. But item D talks about the State Grant Commission and the revised formula. So I'm just wondering if you can update where that discussion's up to. And also clarify, it, it suggests here that it's a per, a per capita basis. If they are still relying on census data, which disadvantages the Morgan, um, and in terms of our summer versus our middle and winter census data, and if they're going to do that, whether they're actually going to introduce a tourism cost data. I didn't hear that last bit introduced. And if they are going cost. to do per capita, where it looks at, at winter, yeah. whether they're considering introducing a tourism cost adjuster, which is recognised different councils like Tasman and us. Well, we need it. Yes. Others don't get it. it, it thank you for your question, uh, Councillor. There's there are definitely some um, pertinent uh, questions in there. Uh, I'll go to the first bit. Um, so the reason for the discussion uh, at the audit panel was the fact that... Um, the State Grants Commission recently put out a paper around a revised formula um, that they were looking at to determine the distribution of the untied grants, mm -hmm. um, that being the grants that we, this council has certainly made a lot of points about, mm -hmm. uh, the fairness and the equity thereof. Um, they had put out a, uh, uh, what did they call it, a conversation starter, I think, discussion paper around um, they're looking at revising the formula which which actually meant that um, in terms of the information that they provided this council because the Morgan Spring Bay Council would be some hundred thousand uh, dollars better off in terms of untied grant distribution um, which which is um, which is kindly accepted if, if we get to that point, of course, but we, we still have, and I'll, I'll bring, I'll bring uh, the mayor in here. We had a recent discussion um, uh, with them about this. We still believe that the form, we, we're very grateful for the revision of the formula and whatever they've done, no. and I can't comment on what they've done. Um, that's resulted in this uh, windfall, in inverted commas, um, but we still believe that it doesn't go all the way to addressing the inequity 
in the distribution of that grant. So it remains to be seen whether that 400,000 would be realized, uh, when it would be realized in terms of the financial year, but it, it's a positive in, in that sense. Um, in terms of the tourism, um, the tourism number recognition, I think there's general uh, recognition across the industry and we across the local government sector around the impacts of tourism, uh, the, the councils that have to wear that more than others, yeah. and whether there could be a tourism uh, a, adjustment factor in there. Um, not sure where that'll go, where that'll go in the future. If I may, <clears throat> how transparent is their formula then, or have they simply advised us of the revised amount that we'll receive? Yeah, thanks for agreeing. Could I just just uh, in here? In, in the context of the report from the audit panel, questions are probably would be better if the general manager gave a little briefing uh, outside this meeting, I think, because, because um, there's been a, a lot of other discussions around the state grants uh, outside of the audit. Okay, I, I accept that yeah. fully. I just think it's important the public, not just ourselves, understand as this goes forward mm -hmm. how that um, formula will yeah. work. Yeah. You may not have seen Madam Mayor. You may not have seen the discussion paper. I'm happy to send that to you. But that but that is quite um, it's quite um, well explained in there. It doesn't go into the detail of the formula, but it, it gives you an idea of what they've done. And I think in terms of the order panel, the, the discussion at the order panel, it was really around uh, not that I was there, but um, it, it sort of the basics of the of the discussion paper that they'd sent out. So. As I said, there's been other discussions since. So I think, um, it's, as you've said rightly, um, it's probably important for the community to know where mm. this is all headed yeah. and the expense of things. So, and it might be so, if I may, Councillor Young and um, General Manager, it might be something that we could do a report at some future. Just next. Councillor Young. Madam Mayor, what does sovereign citizen issue mean? Five pages from the bottom of page two of the report. Um, General Manager, you you need to answer this, I think. I, think I know what a sovereign is. I've got one out in England. I know what a citizen is. I think we're putting it together. I don't know what a sovereign citizen is here. I'll just briefly explain without going into too much detail. This, yeah. It was discussed at the audit panel um, as an emerging uh, risk. Um, and without going into detail, it's around um, um, pe pe persons that may claim that they don't um, abide or, or operate or function under any uh, law, i.e. pain of infringement notice. Um, I understand having, now oh, what you mean. Right. It's got nothing to do with sovereigns or citizens. It's like uh, People that declare themselves a separate state Correct. within our municipality, and I understand there is an entity. Thank you. Any other questions in relation to the audit panel minutes? Nothing further. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Against? It's carried unanimously. Thank you. Number item three is public question time. Uh, three point one. There's a new question on notice from Miss uh, Jean Hackett and the general manager's response. The general manager, there's nothing further to be added to this to your response in this. No, Madam Mayor, it was a it was a follow up question. It As was. you would be aware, the yeah. um, Ms. Hackett asked a similar question on the previous agenda, so this is just a follow up. For further clarification, mm -hmm. thank you. In round three point, sorry. Just three, then, yeah. Um, Jen Hackett is. Um, Contact me with regard to Councillor Gregson. Can I just um, say that uh, this is the uh, questions on notice are not are not debatable oh, okay. in the, in the meeting. No, um, so okay. the, the the questions and answers are there from the general manager. Okay. Under okay. item three point two is questions without notice. Uh, general manager, anything? Uh, to you, Madam Mayor, no questions without notice. Thank you. Under item 3.3 .3 is a responses to a previous question that was taken on notice on the 27th of February from Mr. Young Pickett, the general manager's response is there and there was um, a, 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 some attachments as well. Um, general manager, nothing further to add on that one? 
no madam mayor the um it, it speaks for itself the attachment is included in the in the back of the report it outlines the individual costs that mr kickett was seeking Second. thank you thank you very much i'd like to commend the council officers for producing that schedule it gives a very good idea what the result of some of our planning decisions happen to be thank you for that um, agenda item four is the planning authority selection. There are no reports this month for that. Agenda item five is uh, five point one, the financial reports for February 2024. Here is a recommendation on page 17. The Churchill. So the council receives and notes the financial reports as attached to this report. The period ended February 2024. Is there a second, second, Councillor Young? Thank you, Councillor Churchill. Do you have any questions? Comments? No, no one. All right. Any other questions or comments in relation to the financial reports? I'd just like to do a Madam Chair. Thank. I'd just like to thank um, the Mayor and um, Churchill for uh, picking up a, um, a minor error, but still an important uh, formatting issue that we had in the report. It's been corrected. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I, I did ask um, Ms. Blaine as, um, a couple of questions around the finance reports that um, were very minor in, in the big scheme of things, and I thank her for her prompt response. Thank you. Uh, agenda item six point. Uh, yeah, put... Oh, sorry, I put the motion. Thank you. All those in favour? Is against? No. Agenda item 6.1 is the Marine Infrastructure Community Meetings. In that series, the recommendation on page 21, Councillor Woods, please. Thank you. I'll move that the minutes of the Marine Infrastructure Committee meeting held on the 5th of March 2024 be received and noted. Is there a seconder? Ms. McGregson, thank you. As for what's your chair of this committee, do you have a question? Uh, yes, if I may, Madam Mayor, it seems to be ticking along quite nicely, but as you can see on page 19, the review of terms of reference, um, I, there should have been in the attachments the, re, the revised ones, but so I think for April's meeting, the, re, the terms of reference will come to council for ratification. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Woods. Any other questions in relation to the Marine Infrastructure Committee? Oh, we'll Councillor Woods, yes. Sorry, on no, May no, no. just on the fees and charges. We did have, um, you know, some be, uh, quite robust discussions with regards to that. And as you can see that by the, the uh, motion that we put in there that the marina fees be adjusted to reflect changes in the consumer price index and follow mod modifications to be enacted. So that's what the marine inf marina infrastructure fee increase will be this year is CPI. Is recommended to count, yeah. yes. Anything further? With the motion, all those in favour? Those against? Okay. So thank you. Under item seven is the information report. 7.1 is the Director of Works and Infrastructure, Mr. Porch. There is a recommendation on page 26. I move that Council note the information. Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Young. Is there a seconder? Councillor Churchill, thank you. Councillor Young, do you have any questions? I don't please? have any. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> Just one question about, sorry, my voice is going. Um, Along the beginning of Revan Road near the golf, so through the near to um, opposite the golf course, opposite the bowls club, sorry, there's a lot of development that's happened there, um, or is happening there. I'm just wondering, um, for clarification, uh, um, is there going to be a footpath on that side? That's not a part of it. Um, Madam Mayor, it's, um, the, there's a lot of uh, side sheds that are there at the moment. Yeah. Which we believe are associated with Taz Water's upgrade of their sewer structure. Further up the road, I mean, where there's been subdivisions or three or four properties in the road that sit opposite the um, bolster. I'm just wondering, because I've been asked for clarity, if, we've got, if 
footpaths are going to be there along that side of Reven Road. That's not part of what that. Uh, part of the developments there, um, it would be useful to get footpaths put along. Get about that. The location of the road there is rather problematic in that at some stage it's been uh, created to be uh, quite closely to the southern side of the, road, of the road reserve. It doesn't leave a lot of room between the property and uh, edge. Yeah. Uh, if we were to establish footpath, I think we may have. We've got a footpath up to Mr. Bowles Club, but we're required to, where we have footpath, um, one side of the road is adequate. We like to establish footpath on the other side of the road. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge and, and thank uh, Mr. Porch for the installation of extra pedestrian signs along Redmond Road to Spring Beach, which is um, one of the big uh, ticket items with the Community Connect here. So, I mean, that can <coughs> at least make people aware that people could possibly be walking on the road. And the other one is with regards to all of this um, on the Big Island, the talk about <coughs> asbestos in mulching, it, are we testing for that here? Because on page 23, we've got mulching of all gardens around Marina on eastern side completed. So is that something that we do now or or wait until it's... I, I, don't, I don't understand how the mulching it, it has asbestos anyway, but... Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, asbestos uh, gets in the mulch uh, because um, some, some waste that is delivered to transfer stations, tips, tips etc., uh, hides asbestos sheet that is um, often uh, done as small demolitions and things like that. And it may be that uh, that people are unaware that it, um, uh, the sheet that they might uh, take off the shed or another building in their property is an asbestos-containing material, ACM. Uh, and where you have we have large large transfer stations, lots of vehicles coming and going. It's not possible to keep a close eye on all of the material that's coming in. So uh, trailers get unloaded, uh, trucks tip materials out. Um, the reality is that um, that often asbestos-containing materials are laid on the on the floor of a trailer or a truck, uh, tipped out with the green waste, unbeknownst to um, to tip attendants. Um, generally, you've got very large machines that are then uh, collecting up that material and putting it through very large uh, fitters and it's not noticed. So what I can say is that our smaller facilities enable a better eye to be based on that uh, and the likelihood so that incidents to occur is much less. Uh, it's not that it is not possible that that could happen, uh, but it is certainly much less likely. Simply contamination of green waste when it comes to transfer stations. So it is very important that people, when they are bringing their waste into the transfer station, particularly green waste, ensure that there are no asbestos containing material within that material. Thank you. Mr. Porch, if I may, though, Councillor Woods has a question related to do we test for it as they've had to do on the mainland? And, and I mean, it, it has been a significant issue in some of the um, playgrounds and things on the mainland side because they, their EPA, I think, particularly in Victoria, their EPA did a number of tests on. Does our EPA do that here? Yeah, um, the EPA don't aren't currently testing ours. Uh, I don't. I'm not aware if they're testing anybody else's. But again, it comes back to what your practices are on the transfer station as to whether there is a, whether how closely an eye you to to the 
determine in the first instance whether there is material going in. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, where you've got um, where you've got a process that can be can be managed and observed adequately, um, any asbestos containing materials will be will be identified in the process before it which means that testing will be unnecessary. Probably the advantage of having a small a smaller facility in a big that's Thank you. Thank you. Any other Madam questions? Mayor, yes. on a merger, would it be more likely that we get asbestos in the mouth than on if a, we keep small? Probably a very good argument to remain small, perhaps we are. <laughs> Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments for Mr. Port? I just have one. The, on page 23 of your report, it, it talks about the Millington Beach toilet repair after after it's been reversed into by a truck and we completed it. So I know it wasn't one of our trucks that reversed into it. So who's paying for it? The, the perpetrator uh, of the reversing? Yes, <laughs> yes Madam Mayor, we, uh, we are aware of the agency whose vehicle it was that, uh, that backed into the truck and uh, a bill has been sent accordingly. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Madam Mayor, can I ask a question upon that response? Yes. Is it likely that the state government will pay the bill? <laughs> so, Madam Mayor, there's an assumption there that the state government may be involved. Oh, I'm usually that's a method of the I think state uh, government entity. I think, um, I think our, our Director of Corporate and Community will be right on to the invoice. I'll keep it up for the margin. Yeah. It is actually, sorry, Madam Mayor, it is actually through our insurer. It's through our insurer, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And nothing further? I'll put the motion on those in favour. Those against, very good, thank you. And item 7.2 is the report from the Director of Planning and Development, Mr Woodward. There is a recommendation on page 29. Mr Young? Uh, I move that Council receive and note the report on the activities of the Planning and Development Directorate. Thank you. Uh, is there a second one? Mr. Churchill, thank you. Uh, any questions or comments for the Director? Councillor uh, McQueen, thank you. Just from the Mayor to you, um, the Director, in terms of um, when you go to page 28 in the medical centres, what? Um, it refers to um, we will receive an annual report on the operations of the centres. There's some discussion in the community, well, at least directly over the last month or so, about what the requirements are for that provider. Things like same, making same day services available. Can I just check if the report will include some indication of certain standards that have been set as part of taking on? in that report, not just activity generally. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, yes, there's a, um, there's a finding um, for the importance of that as standard within the contracts. Are there any other questions from the Director, Councillor Woods? Yes, thank you. Um, on page 27, under building and plumbing, the second paragraph, there continues to be a number of building non-compliance matters that are currently being managed the Permit Authority has issued several building notices and orders and are currently working with owners to rectify these matters. And I was just wondering for the publics um, to understand, can you explain some of the issues that are to do with non-compliance of, of building? Can you just sort of, just, just a brief explanation just as to what they entail? Um, through you, Madam Mayor. So, with building and, and plumbing, we work under the Building Act 2016, and under the requirements of that Act, we have an obligation to act whenever legal works. The council has to do, we don't, have a, we don't have a choice. So if we become aware of works that are undertaken without a permit, it might be that someone um, has constructed a house without an approval. We're required under that Act to issue a notice and in order to follow up to ensure that they either um, go and obtain a, an appropriate approval or that in, in a case scenario where the building can't be made compliant, then it would need to be demolished um, or alike. We do have tools available to us, 
such as infringement notices or, or court orders and the like. Um, but, but generally, you'll see the, the type of things are people acting outside the scope of what their permit says. So instead of building something this big, they'll build it twice the size, but that's like the approval, or that they don't obtain an approval. That's the sort of um, enforcement side that we, we have a duty to um, take. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Mr. Woodward, for you, Madam Mayor, do we have many shanties like that in our municipality? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, so we, we've, we've got several ongoing matters where there's been uh, no permits and works have been undertaken. Uh, it does happen throughout the year. Uh, we attempt to try and work with um, people to get the items addressed. To, to get rectified. Some, sometimes it's a person of um, misunderstanding or not knowing. So we, we try to work with those people to get them addressed. Uh, yes, we, we do have them. I wouldn't say that it's out of control. I, I think that we, we certainly want to become aware we deal with them. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we obviously try to, to attempt to solve those. There are situations, obviously, uh, we want to make sure that the people that are doing the right thing penalised either. So in cases where there are retrospective approvals, they do attract penalty penalty application fees, so pay twice as much for those type of applications. Um, but yes, I think that we'd be dealing with several fees. Thank you. Yes. 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 Could I ask the general manager, could they just borrow those? Sorry? Could I borrow, borrow those glasses there? Those yeah. glasses there? Thank you. <laughs> They one they one and a half times yeah. magnification. Nothing. <laughs> One's got a brush and not everything go upside down. Oh, that's better. That's better. Thank you. I'll be right, Madam Mayor. <laughs> I can see. No. I'll, I'll zoom up my screen. You just close one eye. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm anything, very good with that. Call. Anything further on the director's report? Any other questions? Did you have a question, Councillor Gregson? Um, you know, I was highlighted here, um, too, but um, uh, it's, uh, it's just a start. No, no thank, okay. you. thank you. On that basis, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? So, you know, say thank you. Under item eight is the officer's reports requiring a decision. Eight point one is the code of conduct panel determination is noted for tabling is noted. There is a recommendation on page thirty one. Councillor Woods, thank you. I'll note. I'll move that council note the tabling of the code of the code of conduct panel determination report in relation to a complaint made by Ms. Ms. Kathleen Ford against Councillor Cheryl Arnold at this time. At this. The first meeting of council at which it is practical to do so and which is open to the public in compliance with section 287k4 of the Local Government Act 1993. Councillor, can I just alert you to it? It's 28zk. Oh, beg your pardon. 28zk4 of the Local Government Act Thank you, 1993. Thank you, Seconder. Councillor Young, thank you. I would uh, thank the general manager for bringing it to our notice. I did read a 28ZK4, and if you read it with Centio 28ZKL or the other thing, you get an, engine, uh, an idea of what it's about. I did have to look up what the saying meant, and uh, my legal dictionary says, taken alone, I, I suggest that in the future, we don't use per se, but we use taken alone or by itself. So not all of us have Latin diction. Thank you, Councillor. The motion, all those in favour? Those against? Thank you. Dinner of mate point two is dealing with unreasonable customer conduct policy. There is a recommendation on page 33. So what's the wrong food that council adopts the dealing with unreasonable customer conduct policy as attached to this report item effective 26th of March 20. Is there a seconder? Councillor Gregson, thank you. Uh, Councillor Woodstrom, do you have a second? No, no, it's pretty self-explanatory. Thank, thank you. Any questions? 
Councillor uh, Gregson? I did think I tasted to it, and that's me, uh, with regard to the code conduct. But um, if I, for instance, um, went to council and did, for instance, or something, this route here, and it was noted by council, and um, then it wasn't done, then, and then she would have followed up. Is that a breach or? Oh, sorry, I'm, I actually missed your question, right. Councillor Gregson. Yeah. Um, no, I just I, had a constituent, uh, for instance, said that a fountain was in disrepair. So she went to the I council. I didn't catch what was in disrepair. The fountain. So, a fountain. What fountain? Hey, it's just interesting. It's a hypothetical question. Oh. So, Councillor Gregson, just, just so I'll let the general manager deal with that. Right. But if uh, I'm just struggling with the relevance of that to in this agenda item. Right? Um, yeah. No, it's just that what she wants to know whether she's breaching with the, the, the code of conduct. Oh, I said a policy. Yes, yeah. you're right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I still didn't understand the question. No, it's it's something to do with the fountain. Councillor Young, just, just give me two seconds, please. Um, Mr. Woodward, the general manager, I believe Mr. Woodward indicated that he could answer Thank that. You. Um, so, Mr. Woodward, I'm going to defer to you on this one. Yeah. For you, Madam Mayor. So, um, just so I can understand, I believe so. If they've reported to the council, no action's been taken, and then they come back to council. Correct. No, that's not unreasonable customer conduct. So, we've got a customer service charter which outlines what actions we'll take and come back to the person with a response. If council has an action or provided a response to a person's concerns, then um, they have the right to come back to us and, and request that we would follow that up. So that's no problems. Um, this is more in relation to um, if, a, if a person was, was advised numerous times that, say, council couldn't do something, but they persisted and they were being unreasonable about it, that's where it would But just simply to follow up on an inquiry, if not. Um, Councillor Young, then Councillor McLean, Councillor Young. Um, Madam Mayor, I've read the policy. It's eminently sensible, but I'm going to vote against it. And the reason for that is that it is common sense. We've got enough policy with enough pages that, if, that none of us know all the ins and outs of policies. And common sense would cover every aspect of this policy. The risk of having a policy is that we are bound by it. Our council officers are bound by it. Human nature being what it is, we can't foresee every instance of possible misbehaviour by a complainant. And by not including it, we won't be able to stop their misbehaviour. So I think we should let common sense run. I'll be voting against the policy. Really? Yeah. Um, I think it's really important that our staff have safe, functional, respectful environment um, and, and that that's returned to, to our staff in terms of how we engage with them. And I understand why you'd have a policy like this and I understand that there are people who may not respect that need of how they engage with council staff. There's some parts of this that I feel a little bit uneasy about, not much, but, um, and I think um, for me, it could be addressed with just a few little edits. As I read it, and I'll point to page 29, so page six of 10 of the actual policy, first paragraph, there's examples of unreasonable behaviour. And the fifth dot point down says manipulative behaviour, e.g. tears. And I think that's a fairly low bar to set for the community and fairly subjective. And, and I would question whether it's always accurate that that represents man manipulative behaviour rather than a whole range of things that people may come to the council experiencing. So whilst the behaviours of being rude, confronting and threatening and those sorts of things, I think... Issue. I'm a little uncomfortable with the idea that someone comes in and all they're doing is crying and they're treated, one as manipulative or judged as manipulative, and second, that they then um, 
may enter some process. So for me, there's a few changes that I think need to be there for clarity, because if that's what we're saying, if somebody turns up here and just cries, and we say that's unreasonable, I think that that's a pretty unreasonable bar for a policy. Um, so that. Also, the other thing I'd say is I think for me, as I walked through this policy, it included sort of processes. So if an instance happens, the person goes to the supervisor. And it, it had some detail around what's then provided to the customer in the way of a response. And then the next time we sort of touched on process was actually when a director or manager may institute a restriction on people's engagement with council. I didn't read in here as the customer reading this, when that initial issue happens, what are the responsibilities to the supervisor? Who do they talk to, whether it's the customer or not, in trying to decide what the outcome would be? So what I'm trying to say is it's quite explicit on what council may um, decide. It's quite explicit on what council might then determine to do not really explicit on our obligations about the investigation of that or consideration of the matter. And I'm not sure, I think that policy is important for it. So again, that's just a matter of clarification um, of, you know, the supervisor will make efforts to investigate or whatever, but it's not there at the moment. It just says that a letter will be written. Point of order, Madam Chairman. Um, the policy will stand on its own. Whatever someone tries to clarify what it means is no relevant. My concern is manifest by Council McQuaid. Yes, you. Um, Councilor Wigan, thank you for your point of order. Uh, I'd just like to clarify some things right, for myself, but are there any other questions in relation to it, Councillor Churchill? Yeah. Um, there was not really questions in relation to it. When I first read this through, I actually did have there was some elements in it that made me feel quite uncomfortable also. However, um, the primary purpose for this appears to me to be um, to protect, it's, it's actually protect councillors as well, if you read the wording, but it is primarily designed to, um, to protect council staff against unreasonable behaviour. Now, there seems to be, with what we're being told, a lot more of these incidents seem to be coming through. And I don't, I don't relate that back to the performance of our council staff at all. I think these are pressures that are coming from within the community through a whole lot of things that are happening. I think we need these sorts of policies in place to be applied with some rational thought. Now, I know the policy is very detailed and I quite understand what Councillor Young is saying, but uh, it, they will be, I have confidence in our staff enough to say that they will be used, this policy will be used in a rational, reasonable way. And I would hate the community to feel that this was somehow being set up as a barrier between them and, and the staff. I don't believe it is that. I think this policy is necessary and um, we need to protect our staff against extreme incidents, which is, I believe this is all about. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Gregson. Mr. Gregson. Mr. Gregson. What is unreasonable? Right. Oh, okay. to, to you, Madam Mayor. I, th I, think, I think unreasonable is, is, you know, is, is quite um, clearly defined in the, in the report, in the paper. But um, I, I just want to go, I, I, and also I just want to touch on Councillor McQueenie's um, point she raised as well, but I just want to go further to what Councillor Churchill said. This, this policy, um, yes, it, it certainly it certainly protects staff and gives them some sort of assurance and, and a tool, guidance, as to how to deal with, with unreasonable people. Definitely protects the organisation in that regard as well, from a reputational risk and all other risk perspective. But I think it also it also assists the customer, the the the, the rate payer, whoever it may be out there, in that they will be dealing with staff that are well versed in in this policy, but well versed in how to deal with 
an angry person. It's a different getting to Councillor McQueenie's point. There may well be someone that comes to the front counter in tears. That it's not manipulative behaviour as is defined in here. Deliberately manipulated behaviour. That most reasonable people can quickly ascertain what's manipulative and manipulative and what's not. And our staff are well trained and and uh, nuanced enough to be able to assist someone who may come to the counter and they and they are really emotional and upset. It's totally different. It's a totally different thing. And I think. Um, uh, Councillor Young's words about common sense does does prevail in those sorts of situations. Um, you know, there, there's a there's a very big difference between someone being manipulative and someone who is, for whatever reason, um, upset and emotional. And we we got to we got to be able to deal as a council and officers dealing with the public all the time. We've got to be able to differentiate and and deal with people. On the case by case basis. Councillor McQueen, I'll take your point. Please, I think that's a particularly good, a particularly good point. Um, if I may, this my, my view of this is that it's linked to our customer service charter, which to a large extent protects our customers. Um, so it's a an, it's got an interaction, if you like. I think the important thing, the important thing for me in this was that this was this is going to with council's going to use the managing unreasonable conduct by a complainant, which is a manual for frontline staff, supervisors and senior managers by the Australasian Parliament. I'm I'm taking general manager, you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm guessing that some of the information that's in this policy has come out of that particular document about. Is that, is that, like the overarching principles and the like have come out of that document. So you met a mayor that that thank you for reminding me that's a, that's a key point to make that this has come from the Australian um, parliamentary ombudsman that they produced a manual for the sector to be able to to help staff deal with unreasonable conduct. Um, so unreasonable conduct, unfortunately, in the whole Tasmanian government sector, and particularly local government sector, has been the, 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 the level of government closely connected to the community and deal with the community, dealing with the community more than the others. It was it was getting to, or it had got to a point where it was that bad that the parliamentary ombudsman had to produce this manual. Now, you would think common sense would prevail and human decency would prevail and all those things, but I'm afraid the reality was a lot different. So, as as um, the mayor has pointed out, this is based firmly on that overall national manual that was put out by the by the parliamentary ombudsman. So misogyny doesn't apply to tears, really. I um I think also it's important to take on board Councillor Churchill's comments in that um you know, everybody, staff and community alike. Are under so much pressure for the process to manage it, to manage it in accordance with best practice. There's no further comment um, on the motion. All those in favour? Those are, those against? Councillor Young is against. The motion is carried. Thank you. Agenda item eight point three is the Swansea Port House Management Committee uh, their 2023 annual report. It is a recommendation. Thirty-five. Councillor Churchill, thank you. I move that Council receives and notes the Swansea Courthouse Management Committee's 2023 annual report. Second. thank you. Madam Mayor, I'm just trying to find it, but I note with interest the wise comment made by Jason Watson, uh, which I read to be on page 34, that he advised the meeting that the original Crown lease was limited and ought to be altered to allow its current general and extended proposed 
is to be committed. I would suggest that council should take up this wise recommendation. Otherwise, I support them. Any other comments, questions? Councillor Breeson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be sure to Councillor Young there. Um, it was here that um, the, uh, there is a possible way of uh, RSL as part of that. Um, would that be a council decision or would it be a government decision? Well, Manager, they are still to did talk to Council about setting up the Veterans Hub there, as I recall. Go through you, Madam Mayor, to answer to that question. It would be both, both of stakeholders in, the, in, in that scenario. Uh, yeah. I didn't understand the answer, General Manager. I know the answer, but I'd like you to. Well, it's not, I in, in terms of Council's um, oversight of, of this facility by way of the current arrangement and the actual ownership of the land by way of the of the Crown, both of those entities will be party to any ongoing arrangement or agreement with the RSL. The and if Mr Watson's suggestion was taken up, then it would just be a matter for Council, would it not? Yes. Thank you. Would Council vote on that? Yes, Council would need to make a decision on that. Questions? Uh, Councillor Churchill, thank you. Oh, Sorry. just by, just, uh, thank you, Mayor. Just by way of comment, um, it's good to see that, that there is some money being spent on this building. It's a very important building to Swansea, and from the heritage point of view, it, it is, as we all know, it is very much an underused space. I think anything that we can move towards getting it used more, it is valuable in keeping and justifying that space for the community. It's not a, it's not a building that most of us or probably any of us would consider ever using as a public amenity and as a beautiful piece of our heritage. So it's um, just nice to, to think that we're perhaps looking to other organisations and potentially the RSL if that is to happen. So that we're getting further use of that, that building and hoovering and we can justify further expenditure on that building. Thank you. Thank you. Um, veteran, the Veterans Hub is, I believe, a little bit of information I know about it is one of the one of six that's going to be scattered around. There's going to be two main ones, one's in Devonport, one's in Hobart, but then there's going to be the satellite ones, and there's another four. Is that it? And they chose Swansea because of the the area, the, you know, not part of the and we do have a large number of veterans in our area. And, and if the courthouse can, can facilitate that, I think that would be particularly good for our community. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, just on that block, the outstanding issues on page 34. Um, and throughout the, the, um, the minutes, it was talking about Wi Fi. How hard is it to get Wi Fi put into a building like that? I can tell you, um, there used to be Wi-Fi there when the mm. council offices were there, but I don't know what she is now. Yeah, I think um, so, um, the, the Director of Planning and Development through you, Madam Mayor, may yeah. have some, an answer to that question. Any ideas, Mr Woodward? Um, so there's, uh, through you, Madam Mayor, there's several considerations. Obviously, heritage is still as far as any work. Address that. Um, also usage. Yeah. That's the process that our process has. But at one at one time the community Wi-Fi that was in that area was available to be used. And when we had our offices there, we had internet, but it may have only been between the courthouse and, and this and this office. It may not have been a public, like public yeah, Wi-Fi system. Right. Yeah, thank you. 
Thank you. But is, are there any other questions or comments in relation to the courthouse? Uh, 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 other than I'd like to say that I think the courthouse management committee do an amazing job mm. um, through, uh, through managing that very important building. In that Madam area. Mayor, I'd like yeah. to think that the council will seek an amendment to the Crown lease along the lines suggested by Mr. Watson. Um, if there's nothing further, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Tender item 8.4 is a community small grant application for the Spring Bay, Spring Bay Maritime and Discovery Centre with is a recommendation on page 38. Councillor McQueenie, is that good? Yes. The council approved, I move the council approved the application for community small grant funding of $1,000 to Spring Bay Maritime and Discovery Centre in beautiful the beautify of Spring Bay Maritime and Discovery Centre with the interest in surrounds. Thank you. Um, Second, the Churchill. Any comments? Any questions? That's when Queenie had a comment. To your mind? Only that um, with the banner that's being created and that space there and the interest in it, I think it's a really fabulous idea. Any other questions or comments, Councillor Gregson? The small grants, that's the maximum. It is. What's the, how much does the in-kind support, that, would that be in other terms? To you, Madam Mayor, it's, um, it's very difficult to define um, the in-kind support in, in actual, you know, exact dollars, because um, it can vary from, you know, from depending on event or, or community group from traffic control to waste management to helping set up. So it's very it's very hard to define. But it's certainly when we when we provide income support or offer income support in a in a uh, as part of an application like that, it is it is offered with um, with the fact that it's within council needs to provide that. Hard to quantify dollars. Yeah, so in terms of um, uh, as the general manager said Quantifying in kind support for the council it is very difficult to find. I know from um, grant applications with federal government and state government, particularly in the sport, um, in, in sports, in the sports space, sport, there was a school of thought at one time that volunteers within an organisation would be um, charged out, if you like, at around thirty to thirty-five dollars an hour for in kind volunteer hours. So. That's the kind of dollar value if it relates to a volunteer. So, any other questions or comments, Councillor Churchill? Thank you. Oh, just by way of comment, uh, Madam Mayor, um, is the uh, President's uh, last sentence in, in her uh, letter there just saying it is worth noting that we have just received figures that indicate our best visitor numbers ever in January this year. The exhibition exceeded all expectations. Mm -hmm. Fantastic exhibition. And I do think the appearance of that building now is it's brought it alive. And, it has, and if we yes. can yeah. if we can see some further improvement for not a vast amount of money, I think this is quite the quite identified. Yeah. But if there's nothing further on, on that particular agenda item, I'll put the motion all those in favour. Those against carried unanimously, thank you. Agenda item 8.5 is a request for event support by Vision O Beams. There is a recommendation on page 41, Councillor Woods. Yes, I'll move that Councillor approves the application for event support from the events budget for Vision O Beams Development Association. Vision O, sorry, from the events budget for Vision O Community Development Association in the form of $2,000 cash contribution and in kind support for Vision O Beams. 2024 event. Is there a seconder? Councillor Churchill I just note that Councillor Woods, Councillor Woods's motion is just a, a, a little bit different from what appears in your agenda because we were trying to identify where the funds would come from with, with more clarity and they were coming from the event budget. Councillor Woods, do you wish to comment on that? Uh, no, uh, other than, yes, I would. Um, uh, I'd like to just so what a fantastic um, event this is for Vigino and the East Coast stop. 
um, and obviously all these things. Thank you. Any other questions or comments in relation to this, Councillor Gregson? Uh, to the mayor, um, <clears throat> noticed over the three years, numbers have increased to this event. Um, and uh, I wonder if the organisers, <laughs> it's free. I was wondering whether the uh, organisers would consider an entrance fee for adults from the fair price, the <coughs> increase in rates per capita, and children under 16, 16 and three as well. Um, Councillor Gregson, that is a matter for yeah. the organisation, not this council. Yeah. I'm sure it's uh, that they would take on board. Any other questions or comments in relation to it? Put the motion. All those in favour? Just against. Carried in and everything. Yeah. Agenda item 8.6 is a request for event support for the Van Demons Band. And there is a recommendation on page 44, Councillor Wood. Thank you. And again, just for clarification, I've reworded the, motion, the recommendation a wee bit. And that is that Council approves the application for event support from the events budget to Van Demons Band in, um, of $1,000 in covering the cost of associated with rehearsing and preparing the Mariah Voices Choir for the songs of the C musical at Spring Hill. Seconder. Councillor McQueen, thank you. Councillor, what did you wish to speak? No, nothing. Nothing, nothing. Councillor McQueen, comments? Questions or comments in relation to the matter? Put the motion or that. Sorry, no, Councillor Gregson, you had a question? Um, I noticed that the Van Dien's they approached the Mararam singers for Mararam singers, yes, yes. Um, to participate in this event. And now they're coming back and asking council to contribute thousand dollars. If the other way around, giving a thousand dollars to that question, but found the other way. So, may I, can I make an amendment? To this motion, seven hundred. Can I just amend the motion? Thousand dollars. Make it seven hundred and fifty dollars. What's the reason for that, Councillor Gregson? Oh, uh, just to, um, uh, the reason is that um, Van Diemen's band they asked the Rice singers to participate. I asked what? They asked the Mariah and Sinners to participate in this event, yeah. and it wasn't the other way around. The Mariah and Sinners didn't ask the Van Damme's band could they participate. And so, and now the, um, the Van Damme's band are coming to council and say, Look, we want a thousand dollars, but that's the maximum thousand dollars. I can amendment to the motion, make it seven hundred dollars because. Everyone's going to the maximum threshold moment, and, uh, and we're responsible for other people's money here. Be very careful. We're not a soft touch as well. Okay. Everybody, uh, I, I, I'm happy to take it and let me do an amendment. I'm just a little bit confused around reasoning. Um, and, and, and uh, hold hold the thought about a amended uh, 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 motion. Um, I'd just like to get some comment from the general manager in relation to how this was actually assessed um, at the at the application process. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can I ask the councillor for my glasses back? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Oh, no. um, sorry, a bit of frivolity in the chamber. The 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 officer's report and the recommendation was that when they when they look and assess these, these applications, they really base the report and the recommendation on the application. So that's all I can say here is that you know the application was requesting thousand dollars, and that's been that's the basis for the for the report. So in that council, it is at council's discretion whether it wants to go to that maximum or not. Um, 
anything further, General Manager? No, just to say that um, this this is an event as per the amend the recommendation that was um, read out to you, Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, so this is an event as opposed to a small community grant, because I think you may have referenced yes. a small yes. community Correct. grant in your yes. question. Yes. Oh, that's an event. Yeah. So, yeah. Events, so, so events events are um, a different budget, yes. um, and they are treated a, a little bit differently to small community grants. This, yeah. th this is an event. Sorry, you made that clear. Yeah. So your, your point, uh, uh, Councillor Ingham, if I may, your point's taken, um, yeah. Councillor Gregson, but it is, as the general manager has identified, two different budgets yeah. that we're dealing with yeah. here. Yeah. One's the community small grant one. The events budget doesn't have a limit of $1,000, does it? It has no. 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 So the you. events budget, any event support is not limited to $1,000. It's limited to the assessment by Miss Blaine and her team. Board of order, Madam Mayor. Councillor Young. We don't have a seconder for the amended the, motion. The councillor, councillor Gregson didn't move an amended motion okay. at the point. At that point, um, he sought some clarification. So I gave him the option of moving the motion, but now he's aware that it's not the community small grants money. It is the events budget. I'm guessing that the amendment is not going to come, no, Councillor Gregson. Just the clarification, the, mm. uh, the events budget. Uh, it's quite. It's still quite a funny event compared is. to the small yeah. grants, which is yes. coming to an end. We do deal with mm -hmm. a number of different events through the year too. So, um, but if you're happy, if you're happy with that explanation, I'm assuming you're not going to move an amendment. No. Yeah. Thank you, General Manager. I move the motion be now, board. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? Since carried. Thank you. Okay, do the item nine is uh, there notice of motion and there are new, there are no petitions on agenda item 10. Agenda item 11.1 is questions on notice. There are no questions on notice by councillors. 11.2 is comments or statements by councillors. Councillor Woods, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. It gives me no, no pleasure in saying what I'm about to say with regards to the media release in Taz Waters. Now, water restrictions on Orford and Tribunna. Um, everyone knows how I feel about what I've said about the amount of subdivisions without the lack, with the lack of infrastructure improvements, and uh, this is probably being paid to that. You mean lack of water, Councillor? Lack of infrastructure improvements. Another, is that another name? There is no um, water as well, but okay. most people get my guest. I'm good done. Okay, <laughs> Councillor Woods, if I may, I, um, when I was informed of that, I did have a conversation with um, the Taswater's Community and Engagement Officer around the concerns of elected members in that space in Council. Uh, he assured me that, Council, that Taswater are doing um, a number of modelling exercises in relation to upgrades of our area um, but as I um, hopefully politely told him that um, we still have major concerns about the capacity of our system in this area. Thank you. Any other statements or comments? Which um, regard to the State Grants Commission, they had a Zoom meeting. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Um, the State Grants Commission, there was a Zoom meeting open to all Councillors. Notice that the mayor was at and I was basically an observer. And, and you were what, Councillor Greg? I was an, an observer. I came oh, on I'd Zoom and I was just listening. Thank it you. was pertinent to the Gawalla area. And um, the, um, one of the uh, commissioners or one of the um, participants offered the uh, council a workshop distribution. For the municipality. Does the municipality intend to take that offer up? We have had, uh, I think, two or three workshops with the State Grants Commission. General Manager, I know, has workshops with them. Uh, and it, because the question I think you're referring to was from, from um, the commissioners where she asked, was there any way that the 
permission or could provide further information to parents the laws in relation to um, transparency around how it's done and if they could provide some um, simple um, explanations. I think my response was that unfortunately simple, simple explanations around the methodology have not been particularly forthcoming to this point. I think um, yes, if the opportunity if if the opportunity is still there and if the state grants are still offering it, I think we should take it up because it will go a long way to answering Councillor McQueenie's questions around and Councillor McQueenie, to be your information as the as the newer councillor here, uh, Councillor McQueenie has done a lot of work around the state grants commission. So. So, yes, yeah. I think, General Manager, we would take the offer up, wouldn't we? I think we would. And I yeah. think there's been a change now, um, Madam Mayor, in the in the dynamic, as we spoke mm -hmm. about earlier. There has been, they have listened, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so has the state government listened to the concerns raised by this council and others, mm -hmm. but certainly by this council. So an opportunity to hear from them at least around what they looked at that brought about this now more positive change for us um, would be, a, yeah, an opportunity we'd like to take up. And if they, if they compared the Gaborn Spring Bay area to Queenscliff in the area, which is a funny comparison, I thought. No, it isn't because, um, as I understand it, and Councillor McQueenie will correct me, but as I understand it, under the current methodology, there are only two council areas out of the or however many council local government areas there are in Australia that are significantly affected by the current methodology, and that is us and Queen's Cliff in Victoria. So, um, so, 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 um, Councillor Gregson, in response to that, the sh in response to your question, the short answer is yes, we will take up yeah. that. We will take up that offer if it is still on the table. Okay. Can I just add to that? If we are going to have a workshop, I think having done the work of getting familiar with the spreadsheet and what they've decided to prioritise and yeah. not, I think it's it would be incredibly important for them to show us the formula, just as they show the formula now, mm -hmm. because it is a ridiculous discussion without having that. So if they have a draft formula to, to come along, it just stays at a really general, it, it's impossible to grab unless you've got formula. And so I would like to suggest that in asking them about having a workshop, that we actually say we would like to see the draft formula, as the chair promised me and some others who had a meeting last year. But that uh, would be Councillor Young, before you yeah. go and... Uh, three men and me, if I can just respond yes, to that. Yes, by me. Um, from Councillor McQueen. Yes, yeah, so the, the, it's, it's, the formula is complex, we all know that. But I think it's more important to understand what changes have, made, have been made to the inputs into that formula. So they put, for example, a lot of emphasis in that formula, and this relates to us directly here, on what they call um, relative needs. It's a, it's, a, it's a percentage that's represented in that. Our percentage, the last time I looked, was something in the order of 0.2% of the overall 29 council makeup, our relative needs. But so in terms of the, it's, a, it's about understanding what each of those components are that are inputted into the formula to come up with the, with the results. I, I would suggest it's just... both. We need the formula and what yes. they use as inputs. So yeah. otherwise, if I yeah. can just come back to uh, Councillor Gregson's first question. Uh, Councillor Gregson's question was, are we going to take up the offer yes. and then we can work information yeah. we need listening and taking on board Councillor McQueenie's because Councillor McQueenie, I will remember sitting in this very chamber with um, people from the State Grants Commission. I asked a question around, I think, um, our medical levy at the time. Mm. We'd been given some spreadsheets and the response was, I'm sorry, Councillor, but there are a number of other spreadsheets that sit behind what you've been given. And so it was pretty obvious that, that we didn't have all the information at that particular time. Yeah. So we've got to work through getting some more transparency around yeah. it. Councillor Young. Uh, Madam Mayor, to add to the matters that Councillor McQueenie, mm -hmm. Councillor Gregson has raised, the 
minister, the treasurer of the state, who's still the treasurer at the moment, at least for the time being, has a very definite view about what the former formula actually is, and how it should be interpreted. When I looked at it some time ago at length, I came to the same view as he, that I would like us to look at the actual formula, not a draft form, because you need to know what is being applied and then look at any proposed changes, including when it's likely they might be made, as well as the other input thing. So it's slightly wider than the matter that Councillor Thank you. But following on from Councillor Gregson's question, the question was asked by the State Grant Commission in that in that team's meeting. You, would, were we interested in it? Yes, we can set the set the guidelines of that, what information we want for this transparency process. So that would be reasonable, General Manager. I will, um, Madam Mayor, I will get the we'll State the Grants Commission up here again. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments um, in this agenda item? Move on, agenda item 12 is the closed session in accordance with the requirements of the local government meeting procedure regulations 2015. As mayor, I declare the meeting closed to the public in order to discuss following matters. Item one, the minutes of the closed session of the ordinary council meeting held on the 7th of February, 2020. And item two, the sale of land for rates. Is a recommendation to move into closed session, Councillor Woods? Thank, thank you. you. I'll move that Council moves into closed session at 3.19 p.m. Second, Councillor McQueeny. The motion, thank you. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. It's carried unanimously. Thank you. Mrs. Kerr will confirm when the report has been 